Academy. Good evening, everybody. This is Uncle Russ coming to you live from um, Axe Cafe on Kosomo, the beautiful island, the jewel of the Thai Gulf. So nice to meet with you again. Tonight, as always, we've got ourselves on Kabangan. And so I had to play the guitar and I had to sing. Man, they were sorely missed. Eh? But yeah, God's good. And so we're just going to. Okay, so over to Northwood. Here we go. Thanks. Let's give him another round of applause. Okay, so now they didn't know what I'm talking about. Okay, how's this? So early on when I was looking at what I wanted to speak about, I came up just with three characters and, and you'll see exactly who it is. But my message tonight is this, and I think many of us suffer from this dreaded, dreaded, dreaded thing. Identity crisis. Ah, look at the cat. Yeah, maybe if we reverse it. And let's say it was the lion looking at the cat. Many times we are like the lion, but we think like a cat. Instead of doing things that lions do. And so we have this identity crisis. So I know it, it looks different, but this time imagine that the lion is looking at itself and it sees itself as a cat and not as king of the jungle. And my message is very simple, is this, knowing who you are and whose you are. In other words, us knowing ourselves, who are we, but who do we belong to? Living in the world today makes it even harder to know and understand who you are, because, you know, now you can, you can believe you're born one way, or be born one way, but actually end up another way. You understand what I'm saying? You, you, you can start off your life in a certain manner, in a certain gender, and, and change it. You can be fat and overweight, and you find that you can't identify with all the skinny people. Now, obviously, with me, it's very difficult to identify with skinny people because I'm not skinny. So, you know, every time I go shopping, especially here in Thailand, a large year doesn't cut it for me. No. <laughs> when I put on a large pair of trousers over here, that's how the zipper looks like, like that. Doesn't close. So we do find that we have this identity crisis and we just don't know who we are and where we fit in. I, I, I know as a kid, I often used to wonder if I was a doctor. I spoke to my mom the other day. <laughs> you can imagine. She goes, no, no, of course you weren't adopted. I said, Mom, I know I wasn't adopted, but that's what I felt like. I, I, I felt like I didn't belong in the family. You know, I didn't look like any of you. I didn't think like any of you, you know. And so I had this identity crisis. And, and the thing is, there's just so many things getting in our way today to know who we are. And what it does, it confuses us and causes us to wonder. No, none of that wonder is wonder. What's my purpose? Where do, I, where do I fit in? What shall I do? You often find people to, like one day somebody will just get up and go and say, well, what are you doing? No, I've decided to go find myself. Oh my goodness, that's like, quite a strange thing. You've lived up to a certain length of time and now you're going to go look for yourself. I don't know where you're supposed to be looking for yourself, but that's what they say. I'm going to find myself. I'm going to find my purpose. 
And that often happens because we have a skewed view of who we are or who we think we are. You know, questions like, who am I? And with that question, I must tell you, we had a, a television ad a few years ago for a brand of tea called Joko, Joko Tea. And it's quite a nice story. This guy walks into the airport and he walks up to information and he hands his passport in and, sorry, it was the ticket there. Yeah, he hands his passport in and they say, no, no, sorry, you know, there's no ticket book for you. He goes, what? Do you know who I am? And he screams out loud. And next minute, this lady sitting behind the desk, she, she picks up her cup of tea, a pink in the air, takes a sip, and puts the cup down and says, Attention, ladies and gentlemen, there's a man here who doesn't know who he is. And then she takes a cup and she drinks the tea again. Are we in that same position that we say, do you know who I am and we, because we don't know who we are? Or another question, why am I here? What's my purpose? I ask people all the time, so, you know, what's God called you to do? No, I don't know. How long have you been saved? Oh, five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, whatever it is. And they don't know what it is that they're supposed to be doing. Or where do I belong? No, you know. I can't be in this society. I've decided I'm going to go up at the top of the mountain, go live in a cave as a hermit, so that I'm not contaminated by the evil and the woes of the world. Well, that may benefit you, but it doesn't benefit those that you're supposed to influence. You understand? The reality, that's the time we need to be reminded that we are indeed part of a bigger picture that is connected to a bigger purpose. Firstly, I want to tell you what you're not. Okay, I'm going to read it up. You're not a washout. You're not a slut. You're not a drug addict or an alcoholic. You're not unwanted. You're not useless. You're not poor and wretched. You're not rejected. And I want to tell you who you are. You are beloved son or daughter of Abba, the Most High God. Listen to this in Romans 8.15. For you did not receive the spirit, spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. That means you're not some reject, you're not an orphan, and often what happens if we come from a family where our parents may have died prematurely and we feel this incredible sense of, of rejection and being an orphan. We are not orphans. We are adopted sons and daughters. We are the manifested sons and daughters of the Most High God. 1 John 3, 1 to 2, A says this, Behold the manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, we are children of God. Now remember earlier on I said, I didn't know that this song that they were going to sing, but it's a song from the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz has four characters in particular in it. And it's uh, Dorothy, Dorothy with her uh, maroon slippers. And then it was the, the Tin Man. He was desperate because he had no heart. He wanted a heart. There was a cowardly lion that was completely full with fear. And then there was the scarecrow that his desire was to have a brain. I want to tell you, you do have a heart. You're not some coward. And God has given you a brain. And the Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will abundantly give it to you. So if you're in a place where you can't make proper decisions, ask God. If you're in a place where you feel that you have no heart, the Bible says, that I will take out that heart of stone and give you a new heart of flesh and put my spirit into it. God can give us a new heart. 
The Bible says, for we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So you're not some coward. This is who you are and we are. We are co-heirs with Christ, Romans 8, 16 to 17. It says that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with him, that we may be also be glorified together. Co-heir with Christ. And the Bible says, as he is in heaven, so are we on this earth. Seated in heavenly places. Amen. We are fellow laborers with the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. Now you know COVID-19 has been weird because suddenly people feel that they're no longer part of the church because they can't get to the building. Here's a news flash. The Bible says you are the building. You are the church. We are the church. When we carry the Spirit of God in us, through us and upon us, we represent heaven in it, all its glory. When we understand that our identity is in God, then we will know exactly who we are and to whom we belong. However, we have to remember that an enemy, we have an enemy and he wants us to forget who we are and he also wants to destroy the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. That's his primary purpose. He hates us. He hates God. He doesn't like the fact that Jesus came to redeem us, to re reconcile us back to the Father. And his sole purpose is to come to rob, to kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen. Amen. When we feel like we don't know who we are, we need to remember what Jesus said. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. Now listen, this is the key. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <laughs> Ever feel like you put in so much effort to everything you plan? The people in my church will tell you, I'm, I'm a planner, so a couple of days before I start putting everything together, I check all the equipment, you know. And I promise you, it's like clockwork. Either the computer won't work, or the sound system goes down, or we have a power failure. And then I have to remember, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to remain in Christ, and Christ needs to remain in me. If I start faffing around and running around and trying to do everything in my own strength, I'm actually saying to God, okay, you're done. You wait outside, I'll sort this out, and then when I'm ready, I'll call you back in. It doesn't work like that. And I want to encourage us with this last scripture. It's in Romans 8, 37 to 39. And if you're feeling like you have no heart, if you're feeling like mentally you're just not as stiff, if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling rejected, if you're feeling orphaned, if you're feeling like you don't belong, here's something that's going to change your mind radically. And if you embrace the script and you take it to heart, it will change your life. Listen to this. Romans 8, 37 to 39. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life Angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not in your pastor. It's not in your leadership group. It's not in your church. It's not in the songs that we sing. It's not in all the cleverness and the good works that we do. It's in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it is because of his finished work on the cross that nothing, not one thing, nothing. Now, if you don't understand what nothing is, it means this. 
And I don't care what language you want to translate it in. I don't care if you want to use the Hebrew or you want to go to the Greek. But nothing is nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So, if you had an identity crisis, you can now start to look, even from being the little kitten, and you'll see in actual fact that you are a lion. You represent the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are clothed in the full armor of God. You have on his belt of truth, the breastplate of his righteousness. Your feet are shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. You have on his helmet of salvation, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. And that's what gets us to go to war. And we don't have to come up with a strategy. We don't have to come up with a plan. All we have to do is we have to abide in Christ. And Christ is to abide in Christ. Be blessed. Thank you so much for your time. As always, if you need any prayer requests, anything, because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Please let us know. We'd be very, very happy to pray with you. And uh, I'm going to hand you over again to our music. Aren't they just such a blessing? And please give them a thumbs up. Give them a like. I mean, they, they really, you know, they live right on the other side of the island. And faithfully they come across here and they bless you with the incredible talents that God's given you. I'll chat to you later. Let's worship. If you believe God's word is true, then you should know what you should do. In this time, please join us. Give thanks to the Lord and sing praise together. Lift up your voice, your heart, your everything.
Amazing with that. I was trying desperately not to sing along because uh, and it's not easy because I can hear what they're singing and it's so, it's so beautiful. I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, please just restrain. Before I go, I think I'd just like to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you in the precious and the wonderful name of Jesus. And I want to thank you, Father. One of the worst crises to be in is not about health. Not about financial crisis, not about relationship. Father God, one of the worst is identity crisis. When we don't know who we are or who we are in or who we belong to. So Father, I just lift up every single person that's watching. I raise my voice. I raise the speaker. And I pray, Father God, that it would set aside all the lies, all the lies of the enemy. The lies that have told them that they're not good enough, they're not wanted, they're not needed, that they're rejected, they'll never amount to anything. And Father God, that they would embrace the fact that Jesus died for all of our sins, that he gave his life so that we could be reconciled back to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, that you would have convicted us tonight, even now, Lord, as, as we just listen. And we ponder about what has been said. Holy Spirit, that you would convict us and remind us of who we are and of who God is. And so we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is Uncle Russ signing off from Kosamoy. Until next week, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. <laughs>